All right, let's deal with some exponentials on this one. We're going to use the, the laws of exponents to solve these problems. Um, we've got 5x to the third times 7x to the fifth. On this one, we're going to multiply the normal numbers. So 5 times 7 will give me 35. And then on this one, we're going to add the exponents, and we'll get x to the eighth. All right, on number 10, um, again, I'm going to use the law of exponents, and if I have parentheses, I know I'm going to multiply this 2 by all of the powers inside. So I'm going to have a to the 8, b to the negative 6, over 6 to the second. Every part gets the power, and remember, this one really had an invisible 1 on it, so 1 times 2 was 2. That's where that came from. Okay, then I'm going to have a to the 8 b to the negative 6 over 6 to the second power is 36. And I'm just about done, but the direction said no negative exponents. So I know to make the b a positive exponent, I need to move it down to the bottom. So a to the 8th gets to stay up top. The 36 is going to stay down below, but the b is now down there with it, and it's to the 6th power. And that would be my answer. Okay, problem 11. Again, since we have parentheses, where the, every single part inside gets the power, and I'm going to multiply. I'm going to get x to the negative 25, y to the 20, x to the 35, y to the negative 15. And then I know if one um, is on top and one's on the bottom, as long as the base is the same, we're going to subtract the exponents. So I'm going to get x, negative 25 minus 35 is negative 60. And then I've got y. 20 minus negative 15 is actually a no functions of positive 35. Okay, so then I'm not allowed to have negative exponents, so this is going to end up being y to the 35 over x to the 60. All right, problem 12. A few things going on here. First of all, I need to take care of my parentheses, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply. I'm going to get x to the 24, y to the 16. And then on this one, the 5, remember it has a 1, so the power is 1. So if I multiply, I'm going to get 5 to the 2nd, x to the 4th, y to the 2nd. Okay, and then from here, 5 to the 2nd is 25, and I'm just going to write that at the beginning of my problem. And then since I'm multiplying, I get to add the exponents for the x's. So x is going to be 24 plus 4 is going to be 28. And then y, 16 plus 2 is 18. And I've got my answer on that one. Okay, and then does this data model exponential growth or decay and why? Um, I would definitely say that this models growth because the y values are increasing rapidly. So I would say this data models exponential growth because the y values are increasing rapidly. You might choose to say that they're not increasing at a constant rate, they're increasing a little bit more than that, that would work as well. Problem 14, write the polynomial in standard form, name the leading coefficient, and give the degree. Okay, standard form means highest degree to lowest degree, and the degree is just the power, so the highest power is to the fifth, so we'll have 9x to the fifth. And then the next one is to the third, so minus 8x cubed. And then the next one is the power of 1, so it'll be minus 2x, and then plus 7. Okay, the leading coefficient is the number that's leading the problem, so the number that's leading the problem is 9. And then the degree is the highest power, and the highest power is 5. All right, the next one, give an example of a quadratic binomial. Quadratic means degree 2, and tri a binomial means 2 term. So the highest power has to be 2, and there have to be two parts to the problem. So I'm just going to give the example 5x squared plus 7x. You could have all sorts of other examples for that one. Okay, the next one, first of all, there is missing a parenthesis, not that it matters on this one. <clears throat> Simplifying, and we have a plus, and we have a minus. With plus, all we're going to be doing is combining like terms, but for the minus, remember, we have to take the opposite of everything after it. So the opposite of 4x squared is negative 4x squared, and the opposite of negative 2x is positive 2x. And then we can just cross that out. <clears throat> and then from here, we can just go ahead and combine like terms. So 2x squared plus 5x squared will be 7x squared, and then 7x squared minus 4x squared will be 3x squared. I'm going to cross those out because I'm done using them. And then minus 3x plus 9x will be 6x, then 6x plus 2x will be a positive 8x. And notice I did put the plus sign in between. So that would be my answer for that one. 
Okay, this next one I'm going to be multiplying. Um, I'm going to actually do it the box method, but if you are not doing the box method, please remember you're just distributing the x to all three parts and then the 2 to all three parts. But again, I'm going to use the box method on this one. So I'm setting up my parts for my box. I'm going to draw my box. All right, so now x times 3x squared would be 3x cubed. Remember that this has a 1 on it, so we add the exponents. The next part will be negative 5x squared. Again, we're adding those exponents. And then the last part would be 7x. And then down here we have 2 times 3x squared will be 6x squared. 2 times negative 5x is negative 10x. And 2 times 7 is 14. Okay, from here we'll combine like terms. There's nothing to go with the 3x to the third, so I'll just bring it down. And then 6x squared minus 5x squared will be plus 1x squared. You could put a 1 there or not put the 1. And then minus 10x plus 7x would be minus 3x, and then plus 14. So that would be my answer for that part. Okay, problem 18 asks us to factor it. Since this is a quadratic trinomial, I know that I can do two parentheses, and I'll start with an x and an x. And then I'm going to take a 1 times the negative 45, which would give me negative 45. And then I'm going to be thinking what times what would give me negative 45. Negative 9 times 5, negative 5 times 9, negative 45 times 1. And I want to pick the choice that when I add them, they'll equal positive 4. So notice a negative 5 plus a positive 9 will give me a positive 4. So it's going to be x minus 5 times x plus 9. And I am done. All right, the next one asked me to factor it. This is quadratic, but it is not a trinomial this time. But I do notice that I can take the square root of 9 and 49. So this is actually going to be a difference of squares problem. So the square root of the 9x squared would be 3x. And the square root of 49 will be 7. So I'll put plus 7 minus 7. And voila, it is vectored. OK, the next one is similar to number 18 because it is a quadratic trinomial again. So I know that I can put my two parentheses. This time, since it says 3x squared, we're going to put 3x and 3x. And then when we're done, remember, we'll divide by 3. My next step is to take 3 times negative 10, which is negative 30. And then I'm just going to list some choices here. Negative 6 times 5, negative 5 times 6, negative 10 times 3, negative 3 times 10, negative 15 times 2, negative 2 times 15. All right, I want to end up with positive 13 in the middle, so actually it was my last choice that worked. Negative 2 plus 15 gives me a positive 13, so it's going to be minus 2 plus 15. And then I do need to divide the 3 out of one of the parts, and I'm going to divide it out of the second set of parentheses. So 3x minus 2 stays exactly how it is. And then if I divide the 3 out, this will be x plus 5. All right, this next one, um, it's not a quadratic trinomial, so I'm not going to put two sets of parentheses. I can't take the square root of either part, so I'm not going to do it like number 19. Instead, we're going to go back to our GCF. So what number would go into both 12 and 16? That would be 4. And then the smaller of the two x's is going to be x to the fourth. So that's what's going to go on the outside. And I like to write it underneath each part to remind myself that I'm going to divide. OK, 16 divided by 4 is 4 x, I'm going to subtract my exponent. 7 minus 4 will give me 3. And then minus 12 divided by 4 is 3. And then since my x's are exactly the same, they'll cancel each other out. So that would be what it looks like vectored.